this TikTok versus YouTube thing, I am so gassed for it. I can't wait to watch it. How about we go to a boxing game? Logan Paul! I don't stand for any kind of misconduct, and I'm sorry. Okay, let's start off with the massive story that has developed surrounding David Dobrik. So on the 16th of March, we got an insider article coming out stating that a woman had come out and said that Dom from the Vlog Squad had performed one of the most horrible things that one human can do to another that starts with the letter R. I think you guys will know what I'm referring to here. The story started getting attention pretty quick and on that night, David Dobrik uploaded this video titled Let's Talk onto his third channel Views, which was for his podcast. In the video, he addresses his controversial vlogs from the past, including the Seth situation and briefly mentions Dom. Um, with people in my life that I don't film with anymore, um, like Dom and, you know, the other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself because I don't align with some of the actions and I don't, I don't stand for any kind of misconduct. Now, with the title Let's Talk, you would think that this would be a two-way conversation, right? Well, the video had disabled comments, but not only that, it also had the ratings disabled. With the short video being on his smaller platform of the Views channel and taking little accountability with the bigger issue of the Dom situation, people were now even more angry at David. They were now bringing up older clips of David and his vlogs to make him seem even worse, such as these. I just had a threesome. And I think we're all going to jail. <laughs> oh, man. I think we're all going to jail. All right. Oh That's my God, it. Man. See you in 20 years. <laughs> Directed like to who? To literally commit a crime for the views. Oh. Or Zane. I'm saying David or Zane. Dom. I would make Our someone else commit a crime. You would I would make someone else commit a crime. Oh, true, true. Crime. You would make, and Dom would do it. Dom would do <laughs> it. This, this is something that David used to do. So he used to always go get like, Hella fireworks. He used, to, I used to get a lot of fireworks. He was like the firework dude. So we'd get all the goons and we, we would light fireworks off in neighborhoods. Yeah, that was bad. So I was always the guy that watched. Just like in my vlogs, I'm always the guy that like manipulates people and tells them to do stupid <laughs> stuff. And I would just sit back and be like, yeah, 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 that's good. This is my bar cart. I actually don't drink. This is here for my friends. I get most of my work done when my friends are super drunk. You guys obviously don't know Dom because you hooked up with him. <laughs> it wasn't my choice, honestly. What? Oh, yeah. That's what every girl says when they hook up with <laughs> and they even also brought up this now deleted tweet from 2017. As more and more negative attention came David's way, brands started to pull out from being associated with him. We got HelloFresh, General Mills, EA Sports, DoorDash, Dollar Shave Club, Audible, even the Angel City Football Club dropping him as an owner of the team. More brands that dropped him would be Frank's Red Hot, Bumble, Honey, Chipotle, HBO Max, and even his most well-known sponsor partnership, SeatGeek. But it didn't end at just sponsorships. David will go on to step down from from Dispo, the app that he co-founded. Everything that David had been building up to this point was just being taken away from him, and not just in monetization and opportunities, but in his reputation as well. David then uploaded a second response video, this time onto his main channel. In this video, he takes accountability and apologizes for the messed up situation that not only happened that night, but also to what happened with the posting of the video and afterwards. I want to set this video off by saying I fully believe the woman who came out against Dom and said she was by him. Um, as it was reported, the next day I got consent to post the video. Even though I got the consent to post that video, I should have never posted it. And I, what, what I understand now, and I didn't understand before, is that she sent that text because she felt like she had to, not because she wanted to. And that's fucked up. And I'm sorry. This time around, he had ratings enabled, which actually has a decent like to dislike ratio for an apology video. The comments, on the other hand, and a sizable portion of the community didn't find the video to be quote unquote good, especially since he made that video now that he was losing fans and sponsors. Later, it was revealed that YouTube was now temporarily demonetizing all three of David's channels. This is what David's social blade looks as of now, ever since the Insider article came out. The 2 billion plus views that got removed this one day were from all of his videos in 2018 and probably some other ones. He has notably been losing subscribers and only time will tell if it will continue. There had been many other stories that were happening alongside this such as Jeff Wittick, Frenemies' coverage of this, more of David's past content being brought up, and other things. But that could be a whole other video on its own and I just wanted to cover what happened with David here throughout this whole situation that Dom and him have brought upon themselves. Okay, so this will be the part where I will give my thoughts, but to be honest, I don't think that my thoughts or anyone else's matters here regarding the essay that happened and David taking accountability for the events that took place that night. 
tonight. But what I do want to give my thoughts on are the reactions and consequences that we are seeing here as to what many will call this cancel culture taking place. It's pretty shocking to see just how fast a massive creator like David could fall after building up a mostly clean reputation over the years. With so much positive attention from both the traditional and new media, who would have thought that this ever-growing empire would get destroyed by the disgusting actions of someone so insignificant, someone that he called a friend, just like that. David didn't do the horrible act, but he was incredibly irresponsible to have that toxic environment which led to the events of that night. Not only that, but how he handled what happened with the posting of the video and what came with it after that, it's just not good at all. That's one of the scary things about being a creator like David, you just don't think things out when you got more content to post the next day or something. We all saw that with Logan Paul three years ago. But to round out my thoughts, the way David handled things was obviously not good. I'm disappointed in him, but I am hoping that he becomes a better person after all of this. I don't think that people should write him off completely over this situation. People do change for the better, believe it or not. As for the hate that he's getting right now, I think this whole negative aspect of him that we're seeing will go away, similar as to what happened with Logan. I know it's two different things at different levels with David and Logan's situations, but I am just referring to the public perceptions of them both. Sure, not everybody's going to be quite content with David years from now, but if he has become a better person and shows that, I think he could get back to good terms with most people. But in the end, I'm sure that the one thing that we're all thinking of and what is of utmost importance is that the victim heals and gets justice from this. Okay, enough thoughts. Now, I think we may see some more stories in addition to what's been going on. Gabby tweeted that she's about to get into some legal trouble and that she's going to be talking to some lawyers. People are thinking that this is going to have to do with David, but we'll just have to see what goes down. One thing's for sure though, that boy James Charles has got to feel some sort of relief with all the negative attention going towards son of a bitch. What the hell, James Charles? I don't even know what they should do with him. This dude is just out of control. Before I get more disappointed, let's go on to something else that happened in the second half of March 2021. We got the official card of the YouTubers versus TikTokers boxing event. We got Tanner Fox versus Nick Austin, Face Jarvis versus Michael Lee, DDG versus Nate Wyatt, Our Choice of Opponent versus Taylor Holder, Danny Duncan versus Our Choice of Opponent, Deji versus Vinny Hacker, and of course the main event, Austin McGroom versus Bryce Hall. Tanner Fox then said that Nick Austin didn't want to fight anymore, so now Tanner is calling out Lil Huddy. Still no response from Nick Austin. No word about the fight. I think he just doesn't want to box me, so I'm calling out Lil Huddy. Lil Hoodie Man, come on, I know, you, I know you're down. You want to put on a good show for the fans. Win or lose, fight me, bro. I'm calling you out. TikToker versus YouTuber. Tanner Fox versus Lil Hoodie. I'm calling you out, bro. Let's do it. Honestly, I feel like he should fight Rice Gum because of all the beef that they've had in the past. But Rice Gum isn't a TikToker, so that wouldn't work out. Shit, some people might even say that he's not a YouTuber anymore. But later on, we had this guy named Stromedy get confronted by Bryce Hall and Taylor Holder. You're probably a bit confused as to what's going on, so here's what happened. So Stromedy is the guy on the left, and the two on the right are Bryce Hall and Taylor Holder, obviously. Now, as to who this Stromedy guy is, he's a YouTuber with about 3 million subscribers, and the best way that I can describe him is that he's like Jay Station and Jake Paul combined. What the hell? Yo, look! It's literally a clown in there! Oh, he's driving the ambulance! Look, do you see? There's a freaking clown in there! What the hell? An ambulance just pulled in! Yo, run inside! Run inside! Yo, holy crap! Wait, they just turned it off! Look! Oh my god, yo! It's a freaking clown doctor, dude! A clown doctor! What? Where's the clown? Oh Where's my god! Clown? And look! A freaking clown paramedic! So yeah, this guy made a diss track against TikTokers and he talked quite a bit about Bryce. But Bryce, why you pissing on your fans? I heard you beat him up, boy, why you throwing hands? Let me stack my bands, do your little dance. We bringing YouTube back and you don't stand a chance. Dramedy then went on to say that he's offering $100,000 to that Taylor guy to fight him in the event. And I guess both the diss track and offer ticked them off because they pulled up to Dramedy in public. Oh, Dad, you, you can record. Um, I just, I don't want you to like, you know like. It's a, it's a no, no, it's, 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 it's good right here. Record us in a better angle. No, no, it's good right here. I'm dead serious. So, we're here to support small creators like yourself. Buddy, I get more views than you. I get more views than you on my second channel, bro. On my second channel. Let's talk shit. How about we go to a boxing game? Listen. I'm down. Yo, boy, I'm down. Right, that's what I want. I've been saying that. Let's do it. I'm down. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. They went outside and this happened. Yo, let's run it up, guys. Oh, bro. You're all talk, bro. You didn't do shit. Oh, you didn't do shit, bro. Yeah, let's go. He's doing it for the camera. That's, a, that's exactly what <laughs> He's I said. Such a pussy. What are you doing? You're all talk. You're all talk. Twitter talk. Twitter talk. You said come outside. I came outside. Let's go. Hey, come here. Hey, come no here. Damn, bro, that's so crazy. You a bitch. You walking away.
Then when Bryce drove away, the camera people went over to Stromedy and we had this moment. Yeah, he's, he's all talking. He's about to make six million dollars. Yeah, he's gonna get fucked by Austin too. Why he's gonna get fucked? Yeah. I heard he got a blowjob by Austin. Is that true? <laughs> Dude, what the hell are you saying? <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know about this dramedy guy, but he seems pretty interesting if I'm being honest. Now, of course, with this big announcement, we were bound to get some reactions from some of the top YouTube boxers. Case, I uploaded a Reddit video in which he talked about the event. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Kiss Alan, GNBT. How are we all doing now? Before we start the Reddit video, ladies and gentlemen, they have arrived, baby! <laughs> the hamster cars have arrived! And as with the usual, I will tune into a JJ Ola G video for the first time in a while and I will get greeted by a new meme that's going on in the channel. So after we saw the intense racing of the hamsters, KSI went on to give us some of his thoughts on the event. Bring that YouTube dub. Yeah, legit, this TikTok versus YouTube thing, I am so gassed for it. I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to see Deji win. As long as he trains. If he trains, he'll win. If he doesn't train, he'll get fucking slapped. <laughs> like, it's as simple as that. And he knows that. So, yeah, I'm excited to see him fight. I'm excited to see all the fights, to be honest. I'm definitely team YouTube, by the way. If you if you can't tell. <laughs> it would make no sense if I'm team TikTok. I'm excited to see the fight either way, but... Yeah, I wish I want Team YouTube to win. Jake Paul would also give out his well wishes to the people in the event and will later on do the press conference for his April 17th boxing match against Ben Askren. After all the trash talking ended in the press conference, the two would have a face off and things got a little bit heated. Case, I saw this and I don't think he was impressed with Jake's reaction. Hey yo, I'm dead. I'm dead. Ben, Ben literally put his hand in Jake's face. Didn't even care about him. And then Jake's there like, hey yo, what? Slapped his ass. <laughs> Slapped his ass or gave him a body punch. Either way, Ben didn't even fucking flinch. <laughs> and then Jake puts his whole might into that push. Hardly move, Ben. I'm dead, man. I can't wait to see Jake get fucking flattened. <laughs> But Jake wasn't the only thing he was disappointed by. KSI had finally had enough of Twitter and announced that he was just gonna quit the platform and so far he has. And I don't blame him, I mean literally the next day the Twitter mob went after Tommy in it. Why? Well this was because Tommy uploaded a video with KSI and he said this. I think the reason KSI just wouldn't swear in this video is because Dreams fans fucking hate him. Dreams KSI is scared. Of, of Dreams fans. Can you figure out what the problem was? I'll give you a second. Okay, it was because of that one situation a while ago where Twitter was going after KSI saying that he was being transphobic just because he used a word that he didn't know was a slur towards trans people and also because he made some pretty off-colored comments about them as well. KSI did apologize, but many just chose not to accept it. Anyways, the situation here was that in the clip, Tommy said that Dream stands hate KSI because he curses, but the Twitter people were basically saying, no, we don't hate KSI because he curses, we hate KSI because of what he's done in the past, and you, Tommy, are making it sound like Dream stands only hate him for the curse which is not true. We just don't like KSI because of the past actions. Tommy would then go on to apologize because of this. Yeah, I was surprised that that actually happened too. It's actually insane how KSI spoke about what Twitter had become, goes on to leave the platform, then the next day one of the most unproblematic creators on Minecraft would almost get cancelled just because of what he said about KSI in a collab video. But enough of that toxic ass platform. Muda made a video on this channel called Stevie and it's actually pretty interesting. It's this Minecraft channel that has been blowing up over the past few weeks. It Went from a thousand subscribers to now over 600,000 with someday seeing a gain of over 50k subs. This is like some dream level growth. Actually they uploaded a video titled at dream please comment on this video and what do you know dream left a comment on it. It'll be interesting to see what this TV channel goes on to do with the growth that they are still experiencing. Hey maybe they'll catch up to dream or something who knows. Although it won't be easy I mean this full dream just hit 20 million subscribers on his channel recently. Now before we get into the final topic let's quickly go over some of the other things that happened. Valkyrie became Corpse in the official music video for MGK and Corpse's song Daywalker. Corpse and Saikuno met up in real life. Edison Ray debuted her music and all I gotta say is Dixie, watch out. Face Jarvis then got some heat for one of his thumbnails having a photoshopped version of Addison on it. Here's the thumbnail, the fool hasn't changed it either. Jay Schlatt also got some heat for a thumbnail in his video as well. This was it right here. He ended up trending on Twitter because of the backlash and as a response he changed his thumbnail to this where it says Dumb Bird and it shows a drawn version of 
of Twitter's logo. Next up we had hashtag dream is over party trend because there was a clip going around where some guy was saying the n-word under dream's minecraft name and people were saying that it was dream but dream came out and said that it wasn't him and it was later confirmed that it wasn't him it was just some guy that used to have the dream username. This drama had Bo Black make a video with this thumbnail right here. This will probably be one of the most bizarre thumbnails you'll see this year but at least it wasn't as bad as this one. Dan from Game Grumps got into some of that underage allegations drama which in the end he came out to be basically innocent but we did get this one meme out of it which is honestly something that all of us think whenever we see this type of story come out in the YouTube scene. Dusty Error says at the current Game Grumps and Dan Avidan situation I swear it's like every two weeks someone new is exposed. Could you stop making pedophiles famous for five minutes? Keemstar and Void then got some major heat from the K-pop community after they dropped the K-pop stands diss track. Mr. Beast had the finger on the app to event play out where the winner would receive $100,000. And aside from a couple of incidents like this one from Hyphonics here. Um, I lost? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I never let my finger go. I don't know why I just lost. But, uh, okay. Everything came out to be okay in the end. The winner for this event was someone named Swagbacon123, so congrats to him. Mr. Beast also launched the Beast Philanthropy channel with his first upload. This is the channel where everything he makes on it from ads and sponsors and stuff will go back into the... You know what? I'll just have him explain. I started my very own charity and 100% of the revenue from this channel will go towards funding it. Dead serious, 100% of all the ad revenue, brand deals, and merch sales from this channel, Beast Philanthropy, will go into this food pantry. So yeah, big shout out to Mr. Beast for that and everything else that he's doing. Then we also had Morgz announce that he's going to take a break from YouTube and stop doing the cringe content that he's known for and be more of himself on the channel. And all I got to say is good for him. He made that fat bag out of the kids content until he couldn't make any more out of not being happy now. I hope that with this new venture, he can do some good with it. Now on to the final topic. So Logan Paul and the WWE superstar Sami Zayn have been having a couple of interactions on Twitter for the past couple of weeks. And when the March 26th episode of Smackdown happened, we got the surprise announcement that Logan Paul was going to be on the show the following week. There he is! Look at him! <laughs> Logan Paul! Now, with Logan going on SmackDown just a week before WrestleMania, people were wondering if he was going to have anything to do with WWE's biggest pay-per-view event of the year. Well, according to Ringside News, Logan is set to be at WrestleMania, so it's going to be really interesting to see how the WWE is going to use him there, and it's going to be equally interesting to see how Logan does in that type of environment. I mean, I'm sure he'll do great. I remember this one 2017 vlogger where he was backstage with The Miz. You're with the most must-see WWE superstar of all time, and what are you doing back here? Bro, I'm vlogging my life away. Evan, what are you doing, bro? I realize that no one is allowed to use cameras backstage because what we do here what? is not a joke and it's not funny. Bro, I'm not even, I wasn't laughing. It's all about I'm a vlogger. You are laughing. I'm smiling. smiling right now. I'm not laughing. Oh, and I also think that Logan is Grandpa Monster from The Masked Singer. And yeah, just as soon as I was finishing up this video, it was revealed that it was indeed Logan. And that'll be the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed. And I got one more thing to say. YouTube, you buffoons better not take away that dislike counts visibility. I'll see you all in the next one. See